don't move. Ah, ah, ah. Do you feel that against your neck? This is a knife. If you struggle or make noise, then you know what happens. Yes, you received a bit of training for this, haven't you? Everyone born into a noble family needs to know what to do when facing an assassin. Although, in the end, the advice they give is a bit silly, isn't it? If the assassin speaks to you, stay calm and don't give them a reason to kill you sooner than they want to. The idea is basically just to stay alive longer and hope for a miracle. But, I suppose miracles do happen, on occasion. So, I would recommend you to keep your training and stay quiet for now. I'm going to do something I've never done for any of my targets. I'm going to take off this mask and show you my face. Don't forget the knife, but I'm flattered you recognize me. As a potential heir to your house, I know you had to memorize the names and faces of members of rival houses. But I'm a, a rather minor member of the Blackmont family. Even though my family and yours are bitter enemies, I think most members of your family wouldn't have bothered to remember me. You seem a bit confused. It's very simple. I'm Blackmont's personal assassin. I've been officially adopted into the family as a cover. As you might have guessed, I was sent here to kill you. Technically, you're not next in line to take over the family, but your brother is. Well, let's just be honest. He's incompetent. You, on the other hand, could actually be a threat to the Blanc Mons if you are chosen to lead your house instead. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm even telling you all this. If I wanted to kill you, it would have been easier to never have woken you up. But that's the thing. I don't want to. When I was assigned to kill you, I did a little spying. To understand who you are, what your weaknesses were. Hush. I kill people for money. Spying on you isn't the thing to get upset about here. Anyway, as I watched you, I found myself infatuated. Well, for starters, you're not bad to look at. Some of your cousins are considered more conventionally attractive, but only because they center their entire lies around their appearance. You have a sort of... effortless, subtle beauty about you. Perhaps it takes an assassin to appreciate. Pleasing to the eye, but without drawing undue attention. And then there's your wisdom. The very reason I was ordered to take your life in the first place. You're practical and you are willing to set aside the unnecessary things that others cling to. The fact that you alone have been arguing in favor of making peace with the Black Monks in order to end our counterproductive feud, you don't care about revenge. You just want to move on. It's a shame the Black Monks think that you're lying through your teeth to trick them. I know you really mean it, though. I put on a Bit of a show when you woke up to keep you quiet. But the truth is, I don't think I can bring myself to hurt you. It's one thing to snuff out the lives of greedy, cruel nobles or threat because of how ruthless they are. But to remove you from the world, it would be a crime. <laughs> You still have a sense of humor, even at a time like this? Alright, fine. Both are crimes, but the former is merely a crime according to the law. The latter is a crime against humanity. I was given your contract quite a while ago, to be honest. 
I've been spending a lot of time thinking about what I wanted to do. And I finally settled on something. I'm given a bit of leeway in my job. As long as I serve the Black Blunt's interests. They don't care too much how I do things. So, this is what I think we could do. I bring you back with me, and you become a Black Mole. It's perfect, you see. You're not a threat to them. In fact, you can be an asset. You will have to die, and... Well, we can be together. <laughs> sure. Technically, it would be related if you were adopted into the Black Mons, but you know how common that sort of thing is among mobiles. At least in this case, it wouldn't be a blood relation. So, what do you think? Not a bad deal, right? You get to live, I get a chance at you, and the Black Mons' bitter rivals lose power. Everybody wins. Except your family. Yes, I suppose that's true. I don't like where this is going. <sighs> and here I was, praising your pragmatism. You wouldn't really be abandoning your family. You would just be... Well, okay, you would be abandoning them. But if I kill you, then they lose you anyway. So, you're not going to budge on this? You insist that you'd rather die than join your family's enemies? Uh, you're more emotional than I thought, or much, much smarter. Even if you refuse me, I can't bring myself to end you. I suppose in that way, I'm a bit emotional too. Still, you really should consider what I'm offering. Let's be realistic. The Black Mons are the winning side in this conflict. We're wealthier, we have better connections, and, as you know, we have a skilled assassin to deal with any dangerous threats. Do you really want to be stuck where you are? If you do inherit the family, you'll be inheriting a dwindling empire. It would be such a waste of your talents. You'll die poor and destitute. After spending your life stressing and fretting over your situation, who would choose that? <laughs> Barring a miracle, it is a sure thing. Oh, well, aren't you clever? Yes, just like I said, miracles do happen. You already got your miracle. Your miracle is that you're not dying tonight. Expecting more is just delusional. And if that doesn't happen, think of what you're giving up. If you have any chance of getting your house out of the hole it's dug for itself, it would be through a political marriage, a forced one. But that's just it! I'm not blackmailing you into marrying me. All I want is a change to convince you to choose me. In Blanc Mont House, you will have to bear the responsibility of leading. So it doesn't matter who you marry. You can choose whoever you like. And you know, I'm not a bad option. I have plenty to offer. I'm wealthy, intelligent, and... I feel like we could really understand each other in a way that others don't. This is the only way you get a chance like that. I... Well, I suppose technically I could join your house instead, but that's... I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but it's not as though I'm willing to drop my entire life for you. I'm interested in you and I'm taking quite a risk by ignoring my orders. But I am genuinely loyal to the Black Mom family. Even if it's technically only a cover, I am officially part of the family. 
and I am grateful to them. But we've only just met. Hmm, I see your point. If I won't drop anything for you, then I can't ask you to drop everything for me. I enjoyed observing your shrewdness from a distance, but it's a bit frustrating now that you turned it on me. Well, I suppose you've given me something to think about. You're more determined than my observations suggested. Hmm. I just realized I didn't accomplish even one of the goals I came in here with. This is going to complicate things. Still, the fact that you can turn me away with nothing more than words intrigues me. <laughs> I might be even more interested in you now than I was before. I expected to leave here with you, or with your head, if I can muster the strength. I didn't consider what would happen if you remained alive and at home. Well... I would recommend that you don't tell anyone that we spoke. Even if I can't bring myself to kill you, I don't have such reservations about anybody else. Don't test me on this, or they'll be the ones to pay the price. We'll speak again some other time. You might not have gotten the best impression of me today, but I'll try to show you a better sight of me next time. And, keep this in mind, at some point, I need you to stop being a potential threat to the Black Moms. I can't kill you, but unless we find another way, I might eventually have to resort to kidnapping. I would suggest you help me find another solution as soon as possible. For now, I bid you good night. I hope you manage to get some sleep. <laughs>